Well, here we are. Happy Friday, everyone. Welcome to the IT Hour. I guess I should move my microphone closer so y'all can hear me better. Welcome to the IT Hour. It is Friday again, and we have a very, very special IT Hour today because we have our CEO, Raj, with us, and we get to grill him. Uh, sorry, we get to interview him today and have some <laughs> You can fun. grill me. It's okay. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah. I mean, we already I don't have mind. people... Uh, talking in the comments, uh, giving you those hard, hard uh, questions about airspeed velocity of an unladen wall swallow, uh, how much wood can wood chuck chuck. So they are doing the hard hitting questions already, Raj. So I hope I you're, oh, I hope you're I prepared. I cannot yeah. answer those questions. Yeah. I mean, I, th I think <laughs> your, your geek cred is going to go downhill if you, uh... <laughs> I know it is, it is. I don't know all the movie references, unfortunately. Yeah, that's all right. Don't. We don't. We don't yeah. expect you to. We'll, we'll make someone else answer those. But welcome <laughs> everyone today. Uh, we're happy to have you here on the IT Hour, and uh, we have some some questions for Raj already. But if you do have some, you know, some actual serious questions, you are welcome to drop them in the chat. And or even uh, not so serious ones. Yeah, we'll try our yeah. best. You, yeah. We could do some fun ones, you know, if you have some yeah, questions absolutely. about about Raj and uh, other things he's done or some fun things about his you know, his background and things like that. We can certainly work those in as well. Um, if you're wondering where Alexa is today, I don't want to, you know, think want you to think that we uh, got rid of her. She's just feeling a little bit under the weather. You can see her in the chat and she's going to be around, but she's uh, just not going to be helping uh ask the questions today. So unfortunately, she's going to be off camera. I'm so I'm going to ask Dorothy to answer the questions for me. How's that? Oh, there you go. Dorothy's already <laughs> answering a woodchuck. Yeah. A woodchuck woodchuck as much wood as a woodchuck could chuck wood. There you go. That's yeah. great. And I can't believe I actually was able to say that. <laughs> right now, Raj is really debating his user base. <laughs> yeah. Well, Rob, with, with you on online, pro probably. So be, be careful there. <laughs> All right. So we're going to get started. And uh, Raj, we're going to ask you, what are you most excited about this year? Yep. Thank you for uh, having me. It's awesome to be here. Welcome, everybody. Um, look, I'm, I'm, a, I'm an optimistic person by nature. So I would say I am really optimistic about 2023. I think, you know, look, 2022 is a hard year, I think, in a lot of ways for a lot of people. And, you know, I think I look at it a little bit more macro, maybe. Um, my hope is that, you know, we get things stabilized and, you know, the economy starts to kind of turn around a little bit. And, you know, we start to see um, just a lot of things accelerating in a positive direction. I think with technology, we continue to see like amazing, amazing stuff out there. So, you know, like just generally speaking, like all this chat GPT stuff that I don't know a ton about, but you, you read the headlines and it's like, wow, that's pretty cool. Pretty interesting. A lot of good stuff to learn about. Um, so, you know, I think that's always, I'm super optimistic about just innovation in general. And then I think when it comes to Jump Cloud and, you know, the amazing group of people around us, our community, I'm excited to continue growing our community. And, you know, we have customers in I think like 160 countries or more than that. I, that to me is super, super awesome. And, uh, you know, I love visiting and talking with folks all around the world. And, you know, I feel like that's super cool. We have partners all over the world too. So you get to meet lots of folks like that. And, you know, and then obviously I love the product we're working on. There's so much new innovative stuff. I know we just did our roadmap webinar earlier this month and that's really fun. I think there's a lot of really cool product stuff coming out. So, um, you know, we're very interested in, in the work that's going on there. So I don't know. I, I'm just an optimistic person by nature. So there's so much stuff I get excited about the team, the community, our customers, our partners, talking to them, um, learning. So, you know, I hope everybody stays happy and healthy. Hopefully COVID doesn't, you know, kind of become a thing again. Hopefully it's sort of died down enough, but you know, it sounds, it sort of seems like it comes and goes and you know, you want, you want everybody to be happy and healthy. And you know, if that's there, then, you know, I think the work stuff just turns out to be a lot more fun too. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, and we forgot to tell you that all of Raj's answers today are brought to you by chat GPT. We just, you know, put all the questions in there and then just decided to just do, do whatever it said. So yeah. no, not yeah. really, not really. These are all real answers from Raj uh, right here, right now. Uh, nothing pre-recorded or anything like that. 
Yep. So uh, I'm, 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 I'm alive. I'm not a bot. I'm not a, <laughs> I'm not a, well, I don't know, an AI, I guess, right, is yeah. what they call it. Right? It's not a Rajbot. It's, yes. He's real and in person. Uh, <laughs> I am seeing your questions in the chat, and I'm uh, I'm grabbing them. Alexa's going to pull them out for us, and we will uh, answer those after we answer, after Raj answers a few of the, the pre-done questions that we have. So cool. on the reverse side, or on the flip side, what do you see as the biggest challenges in 2023? Yeah, I, I mean, look, I think I think some of the macroeconomic challenges that we have, you know, balancing those with still, you know, understanding that, you know, we need to all make investments, everybody, right? And we still need to focus on the future and, you know, continue to innovate and grow and, and things like that. So, you know, I, I think, you know, we lose sight of a little bit that these are cycles, they come and go. And usually the, the down cycles, at least, so I'm, I'm old enough that I've been through quite a few now. So, um, I've seen, I know, I know, uh, I've seen quite a few and I, I think generally my experience has been, they're kind of sharp, they're steep. Um, they go, it, it happens. And then, you know, it's over some reasonable short period of time and reasonably short was probably, you know, it could be 12 months, 18 months, 24 months. Right. I mean, and then you sort of get back to some sort of norm normalcy and it starts to, you know, keep going back up. And, and I think, you know, everybody just right now is sort of still in that mode of like, oh, wow, you know, life used to be different a year ago, you know, getting used to it. And what's going to happen is in the next, hopefully six to 12 months, we're going to kind of get back to, okay, there's a new normal and we're cool. Everything's kind of moving forward and, you know, and doing that. But I think understanding that means, and it means that we need to keep investing. It means that, you know, not only um, Jump Cloud, which we are continuing to invest really heavily in technology and our team and, you know, kind of the things that we want to go build, but also our customers, you know, continue to grow your business and, you know, trying to be efficient and automated and, you know, kind of working on high value things. And so, you know, I think that's going to be one of the biggest challenges is, you know, finding that balance, you know, because we've been, sort of for the last few years, last, you know, four or five, 10 years, we've been really sort of one-sided, which is go, 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 invest, and maybe not being as, you know, quasi-disciplined or disciplined enough. And, and now I think people are going to get really disciplined about like, hey, you know, this is important. This can make a meaningful difference to my business. I'm going to go work on that. And that's going to be, I think that's going to be a good thing. It's just a challenge to sort of shift from the mode we were in to a new mode. But I think it's it's ultimately a good thing. So I think that's one of the biggest challenges. Look, I think you know there's a lot of stuff going on in the world that's really tough stuff, right? We've got still a major war going on, which is hard. Um, and then you know you've got uh, you've got all the health stuff everywhere around around the globe. So you know I don't know. I mean, these are very broad, big picture things. I guess challenges maybe at at the micro level, at at jump cloud level. You know I think just continuing to really execute well and making sure that we're working closely with our partners and, and customers and um, uh, all of that stuff. So, you know, that's, that's a core part of, you know, what we're focused on. Yeah. Thank you. The next question we had, we're going to switch gears a little bit and talk about um, password manager. Sure. Uh, many password apps use cloud stored password vaults. And we here at JumpCloud, we use a, a decentralized architecture. Can you explain why we made that decision? And in light of recent breaches, how that decision seems to be paying off? Yeah, it's a great question. So I, I mean, I think the thing to think about for JumpCloud from the beginning, we've had a bunch of sort of I'll call them security design principles that, you know, we've had. And one of the design principles was around passwords. And you know, our passwords are one way salted and hashed. And, and obviously that doesn't really work with a password manager because you need the password because it needs to be uh, entered into the website so that you can log on. Um, but we never really wanted to have passwords stored up in the cloud. And if you go back to the beginning of the cloud kind of era, if you will, I, I still remember everybody was like, holy cow, security is, is the thing that we're really concerned about. And you know, back then, maybe it wasn't focused quite as much on passwords, but it was centered around data. And, you know, that's always been one of the big concerns. And I think the more you can come up with some design principles that maybe help you keep it more secure, then, then it's better.
right? And so, you know, our design principle here was we wanted to have as limited, you know, potential uh, blast radius if something were to happen that's negative. Um, we wanted to make sure that we gave people more control so that they could feel like, hey, you know, yes, I've got this cloud administ administered password manager, but the vaults are actually stored locally on my device. And, and I thought that was a great compromise in a lot of ways where you get the benefit of being able to administer things, you know, kind of globally through the cloud, but yet everybody's personal vault was, you know, within their personal realm of devices, right? Now, that doesn't mean a device can't get breached and, you know, something bad could happen, but um, ultimately that is one device of one person's that's getting breached versus, you know, kind of events that we saw, which are, you know, you you hack into a service provider and then that service provider basically, you know, uh, lets everything go, if you will. And mm -hmm. and so that's that was an important design principle for us, right? Like we, you know, obviously there's a lot of bad stuff going on uh, from a, you know, security activity perspective out there. So you're not gonna be able to prevent everything. Uh, we know that, everybody knows that. Um, it's a reality of life now, unfortunately. Um, but the more that we can make it harder and limited in terms of what could happen, we thought that that was really critical. And and I'm actually really proud of the team for coming up with that architecture. Um, and it seems especially kind of prescient right now based on what's happened. So, you know, I think I think we're in a good spot there from from the architecture. Yeah. And if, if any of you are here and you missed last week, we actually had Antoine um, on the people who is heading up that project on here and he gave a, a demo and talked about what's going on with password manager and so answered some questions about what we're doing with that in the future so please make sure you check out that replay from last week because there's a lot of good stuff in there let's go on to the next one which is um about identity transformation we're going to be talking a lot about identity transformation uh, this year seems to be kind of the latest uh, trend. What does that mean to you? Yeah, um, I think identity transformation, maybe let's step back and go backwards in time and we talk about cloud transformation. And my sense is, you know, cloud transformation really sort of kicked up, you know, what, 10, 15 years ago when people were starting to think about, you know, how do we shift to the cloud? And a lot of the people that were shifting to the cloud were small to medium, enterprises. There are smaller organizations, not the large organizations. And look how long it's taken for just cloud transformation to take hold. And, you know, ultimately now you have a lot of these larger organizations thinking about cloud transformation, but even they aren't fully done with that. And so part of my thought around identity transformation was really that, you know, basically it's the next step. Like we have moved a lot of workloads, a lot of cloud, but identity stayed kind of local. It stayed on-prem. And ultimately, that's going to shift to the cloud too, in you know whatever form or fashion it could take, right? I mean, there's going to be all kinds of interesting things that happen in the future, whether that's cloud directory uh, plus passwordless and and all of those things. So the the idea has been that I think as time goes on, people have done the cloud transformation, but now they have identity in the uh, on prem, and they want to figure out how does that match their cloud environment and how does it become more um, connected to everything that they now have, which is a lot more heterogeneous than it once was. So to me, we're now on the early stages of identity transformation. So it's sort of like maybe it's 10 years post the, the cloud transformation, but all these small to medium enterprises who are usually ahead of every large enterprise because they're more nimble, more agile, um, much more innovative, they're starting to realize, hey, we can have actually shift stuff to the cloud. You know, hopefully it can be more secure over time and it's going to be much better, much more, um, much more efficient for us. And we can let people live wherever they want to live. We can have remote hybrid work. We can onboard and offboard people a lot easier. So all of those, um, all of those things um, end up being advantages uh, that you get if you're doing identity transformation. So that's kind of the thought process I have around it. And I think it's going to be, you know, kind of the next wave of transformation because identity now is so it's so critical. I think it's sort of, I, I think hopefully people have heard me say this, but I think it's like the fundamental thing that an IT organization does, which is really connect people to the IT resources they need to be productive and, and you know, helpful to their organization. Well, that all starts with identity. 
Um, so I think that's going to be the next major thing. Yeah, absolutely. We're getting some really great questions uh, yeah. coming in the chat. So I'm looking forward to uh, getting to some of those very shortly. Uh, we've got a couple more that I'm going to throw at you and then we'll jump to the audience questions. Yeah, no problem. So, uh, JumpCloud emphasizes the importance of being an open directory platform, speaking of what you were just talking about. Why is that critical for modern small, medium enterprise demands? And why do you think ADAAD can't scale for these? Yeah. So, I, I mean, I think from our perspective, we want to give people a lot of choice and freedom to use whatever is best for them. And so that's why we really think the open directory platform concept is so important, because we want to make sure that as an organization, your team can use whatever is right for them. So whether that's you know Microsoft, um, M365, Azure, whether it's Google Workspace, whether it's AWS, whether it's Mac or Linux, whether it's you know all kinds of different SaaS applications, we want you to have choice. We want you to be able to put stuff um, on on prem if that's what works for you. Um, if it's in the cloud, that's fine. Um, it's really whatever choices you want to make, right? And ultimately, how do you build a platform? that gives people all of those choices to use whatever is best for them. Well, ultimately, I think you need things that are standards based, right? So we really focus a lot on, on the identity standards and protocol standards. And we try and do that in a way that lets us, you know, make sure that we can give people all these different choices that they want to have. And that's what I think, you know, is so powerful about kind of the open directory platform concept. And obviously for small to medium enterprises, I think there's so much more agility, there's so much more innovation that happens at, at small to medium enterprises. They're out there using the newest technology. Well, if that newest technology can't be integrated in to your identity platform or your IT organization, how are you gonna enable your team to go leverage that newest technology? So I think that's what makes us innovative too, is that we're forced to be innovative because our customers are super innovative. So I think by having this sort of independent platform that will let you connect to just about anything is the right concept um, especially for our, our customer base. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we're going to switch to talking a little bit about MSPs. I did see something about an MSP in the, in the chat, so that'll be kind of right along this. Yep. How do you see our partnership with MSPs growing in 2023? So I, uh, I think MSPs are a core foundation of sort of the IT community, if you will. Right. So, I mean, when you think about the impact that they have around the globe, um, so there's what, about 100,000 MSPs worldwide. They probably support somewhere, let's say, low end 30 customers a piece, 50 customers. I mean, you're talking about 5 million, 3 million, 5 million businesses, organizations that they work with. I mean, by definition, they're helping manage most of the organizations out around the world, right? So they are an important, important part of the community. And I think when we work with them, we can solve problems for a lot of customers and we can give hopefully MSPs a lot more um, automation, a lot more efficiency, but then hopefully they can also have new products that they can go out and sell to their customers too. So a really, really important partnership. We're putting a ton of time and energy into that. I think everybody hopefully has met Antoine who runs our MSP business. And you know he's been he's been fantastic about you know engaging with the whole MSP community. But that's a really important part of I think the overall IT community, um, maybe one that almost gets underrepresented, um, but it's one that we think is is probably the most critical for you know that that whole broader you know small and medium enterprise IT community. Yeah, we've had conversations about um, looking at MSPs as not just a vendor, but a partner, a true partnership where, totally. yeah, where yeah. you are working together because um, this, this is your business that, that you're trying to grow. And, and if you really integrate them and look at them as your, your partner and, and build trust between you, then you'll go a lot further than just kind of holding them at arm's length. So. Yeah, totally. And I think if anybody, if any of the MSPs out there want to talk to Antoine, please let us know. And, you know, he's, he loves to talk to, to the community and make sure that, you know, we're really understanding what's what's going on, right? Like what, what would be super helpful? Because MSPs are out there talking to lots and lots of individual customers and they're seeing trends way earlier than anybody else, right? So there's a lot of opportunity to innovate with, you know, in partnership with, with MSPs. Yeah, absolutely. And we do have uh, several MSPs that attend. So if y'all want to reach out, uh, let us know. Next question. 
We're going to talk a little bit about compliance. Uh, a lot of companies have been facing compliance and regulatory issues. Things change and security and everything. How do we solve for that with our directory platform? Yep. So um, lots of compliance standards, lots of different ones. <laughs> um, so and and as everybody knows out there, they're not easy to to work on and you know, there's so much work that IT folks go through and legal folks and finance folks. And, you know, the whole company usually has to get involved in, in a lot of this stuff. So it's not easy at all. Um, I think identity and what people can access the devices that they're on. And if those devices are at the right posture level, those are foundational to just about every compliance standard that I see. So maybe not all of them, but pretty darn close. They, you know, you got to know who's accessing what. You got to make sure it's the right people. You got to make sure it's secured. And then you have to make sure that the, the machines and devices that people are using to access things on are, um, you know, are safe and secure. Right. So I, I think, you know, when you sort of level up to that, that perspective, it makes it a lot easier to understand why, you know, compliance is so important to our company. And, you know, we, we need to really make sure that we are building things that help support people in that, in that journey. So there's a lot of really interesting organizations now that are out there that we're partnering with that do evidence collection and, you know, help make that easier, especially for things like SOC 2, which, you know, we can argue whether that's a compliance standard, not a compliance standard. Um, but we, you know, there are things that people need to go do and we know they need to go do SOC 2, um, ISO, and then there's all kinds of other ones, of course. Um, but I think, it's a core part of you know what we do and we have to help support those standards for our customers and that's what they're trying to accomplish with our platform too not in addition to security in addition to productivity in, ad in addition to efficiency they're also trying to be compliant so it, it becomes a core design requirement for us all right awesome we have a ton of great questions so um Let's jump to one of the first ones from Dennis. Um, we talked a little bit about AD and AAD, uh, but Dennis wants to know how is Jump Cloud positioned to compete with Microsoft Azure AD with Intune slash Defender? So that kind of slightly. Yeah, different. yeah, come on. Yeah, I, I, I mean, look, Dennis, it's a great question. We get it every day. Um, ob obviously, Microsoft's a great competitor and they've built something you know that's really tailored to um, Kind of their world if you will windows and and their platform and they're trying to do other stuff too but in general i think the way we position ourselves especially with our open directory platform is to talk about like the open nature of it and it's open on platforms but it's open on protocols as well and i'd say some of the width that we try and provide around the different capabilities that people can have around identity around device security around conditional access all of those things um security in general um, those are all part of the ways that we we compete. I think if you're an organization that is interested in using the best technology out there, whether that's AWS, whether that's Google, whether that's Apple, um, generally, I think people find that that Jump Cloud becomes a pretty darn good solution for them in, in that case. If you're really exclusively all Microsoft and you're tied into Azure and the stack, then it may be that Microsoft is is a better solution. Although as crazy as it sounds, we also have a lot of customers that are pretty much all Microsoft, but they but they use us as their core uh, directory and device management platform. Awesome. Another question from Kyle. Hey Kyle, um, about a year ago, Jump Cloud seemed to pivot from new features to platform stability, and things have been great, by the way, uh, but what we talked about in the roadmap webinar last year was asset management. And I know that we have, we've pushed that off a little bit. So Kyle is wondering yep. if they might see that in 2023 sometime. Yeah, Kyle, it's great to talk to you. Thanks for, for jumping in a little bit, a little bit of time since we've connected, but um, yeah, we really did spend a lot of time on platform stability. Hopefully everybody has seen that. Um, I think, you know, I've had a lot of conversations over, over the last year um, around, you know, the investments that we've made in that area. And I think the team's done a really nice job of, of you know, kind of innovating there and making it much more stable and secure and all that. Um, 
yeah, asset inventory, asset management. This is an area that's of interest to us. It's something that we have been working on. It's a challenging problem for us. Um, and it relates some to some of the other questions that people have around data and, and all that. The simple question that we always get is, hey, you guys have all the data, just just produce it. And and some of that is, yes, we can just produce it, but there's a lot more that people want uh, around that. It's something that's high on our list. Um, I don't know, I can't commit whether it's 2023 or not, but um, it's something that we're actively thinking about, working on, trying to figure out what's the right path forward. So uh, I'd say, yes, high on our list. Um, sorry, I can't give you an exact date on when, when we're going to... Um, when we're going to be able to get that done. All right. Next one from Nathan. Uh, Jump Cloud collects a ton of useful information. However, there's not an easy way to query and report on that information from the admin console. Yeah, the API exists and that's great, but it's not user friendly. Are we finally going to see robust query and reporting capabilities in Jump Cloud this year? Yeah, I, Nathan, I don't know the answer to that. Um, uh, to be candid, because we are working on on a bunch of stuff in that area, and your question is is super broad in terms of um, all the data that you might want to see and, and things like that. Reporting, I've always said this: reporting is an incredibly, incredibly difficult thing to get right, um, and and it's not because of necessarily just the technology; it's the use cases, it's the type of data that you may want to see versus other people, and when you start to think about how flexible the reporting solution you can create, all that flexibility creates a tremendous amount of length of time to go build it. So it's sort of like you have some reports and the reports are probably somewhat simple today and you know you can kind of get those. Well, those are a contained amount of work to get done. Now, every time we add more flexibility, it gets harder and harder for us to build that. So that's the challenge in reporting in general. Um, and I, I totally get where you're coming from. And I know there's a few other comments related to that. I think the best thing to do is um, I would love to understand more specifically, what is the data that you're looking to pull out um, and what types of things would be most interesting that we have that we aren't able to provide you in a very easy to use format and let us go think on how we can, you know, maybe get you that. Um, I totally agree. APIs are, are harder. I wonder if things like the PowerShell module um, might be an easy sort of, you know, first step where if we could kind of enable that, that's a little bit easier than, you know, putting it into the UI and, and all the back end stuff that we would need to do there. So those would be interesting conversations for us to have. And I'm happy to, you know, if we want to get connected offline, I'm happy to spend a little bit of time with our data team and you um, and whoever else would like to do that. We would love to have that conversation. Obviously, we know we need to continue to innovate and report uh, on reporting and make it better. Um, your comment is not a new one. We we hear that regularly that, you know, hey, you have this data. Why can't you get it to me or why can't you get it to me more easily uh, in the format that I want? And, and it's fair criticism. And, you know, we want to continue to get better there. Yeah, Nathan, if you'll notice, you know, Derek posts regularly about the reporting updates in the community um, when, when we have new reports available. I can ask him to post in the community asking who wants to get together for a small focus group on on just this topic and get get volunteers and, and get people together to to talk about this so we can make that happen. So Luke says, I love Jump Cloud, but I have a bit of concern lately about the pace at which new big features have been coming out, but with the feature itself being rather shallow, patch management, remote assist, for example, while existing features are slow to gain depth, conditional access is a good example. There's a lot of functionality missing to really get to zero trust, especially with the BYOD mobile devices. I know there's active work being done here, but it's an example of lack of depth. So do you yeah. have a comment on that? Yeah, absolutely, Luke, it's great. Great feedback, um, fair criticism. So, um, you know, I think everybody knows you make choices and, and some of those choices um, lead to different consequences, right? And so the one of the choices we made was that we felt that, you know, patch management and remote assist, some of these capabilities were super important that our customer base really wanted. Um, and we tried to release um, as quickly as we could with various levels of functionality. So remote assist is a great one. Um, we felt it was important to get a more secure version out there, which we thought would be pretty, um, 
pretty useful for people, which is basically um, a supported assist, if you will, or um, a mode where you have to enter a, a code to make sure that someone's allowed to access your, your machine. We also heard from many people, it's like, hey, no, we don't want that. We want silent mode. Uh, we want to be able to just you know, log into anybody's machine. Um, but we felt like starting with maybe the more strict security use case was important, and then we would offer the future functionality. And that's a choice. We could have waited to, you know, I think silent, silent mode is going to come out here this quarter. But, you know, we could have waited instead of putting it out last year, remote assist. Um, we could have waited until this quarter and just put it out all at once. And, and that's ultimately a choice that we end up making that we'd rather get it out to the community. And in the case of remote assist, I know there's a question about this later, but uh, we decided to make that free, um, recognizing that it was probably only one part of the solution. In other cases, we we decided we thought patch management, for example, especially at the OS level, is a super critical and important um, uh, capability that people need to have, and we felt that was value that that we would charge for. Um, but I think that the core question here is um, we have to make choices. Everybody knows that, and sometimes we don't make the right choices, but we do try and make choices that are informed from everybody's feedback. So I think. If we can get offline with you and just say, hey, you know, what are the issues that you're having? I get mobile, mobile on um, for conditional access. We've heard that quite a bit, and that's pretty high on our list right now. But what are the next two or three things that you feel like aren't deep enough um, that you would like to see, you know, continue to get deeper? I would love to hear that from everybody. Like that, that we can get all that feedback, then we can take everybody's feedback and say, okay, these are the top three things that people want more depth on. You know, we can balance that and say, okay, off, across 100 people or 500 people, this is what what the feedback was. You know, then we can get a good sense of it. So, if people want to drop us a note or, you know, put it in chat or however we can get the information or talk to you, we would love to do that. And you know, ultimately, that'll make a difference on on the choices that we make. That's awesome. Brandon is asking. Are you worried about Microsoft pushing to allow only Microsoft accounts for login? Well, um, they're doing that in some cases already that are not great. Um, and, you know, I would hope that the community in general would say that's not really where we want to head. Um, so, for instance, um, on Windows MDM, if you want to take uh, a zero touch onboarding flow, kind of like Apple has with their uh, zero touch, you must have an Azure AD license, which we think is not great for everybody. Like, you know, a lot of people don't want to have to pay for an Azure AD license, but they want this, you know, zero touch onboarding with Windows. So that's a good example where we think that that's not right, that they're doing that. Um, but, you know, I think if they continue to go down the, that path, I think that's not great for the community. It's not great for enterprises. It's not great for organizations. My hope is that they wouldn't do things like that. I think they probably know a little bit better not to do, you know, things that are hugely anti-competitive and, and things like that. So, you know, hopefully they don't go down that path. Um, flipping back to Luke, he says, uh, curious for some feedback on Jump Cloud's posture slash approach to pushing out features in an agile manner, but balancing that with bringing depth to existing core features. So kind of goes back to. Yeah, I think it's part. sort of the same same thing. I, I think it's the more feedback we can get, the better we can make decisions, right? So, um, you know, I, yeah, I, I think that's the best way to say it is like, let's if, if there's things that you feel are lacking or you want more depth on, let's make sure that we hear that. Um, and then, you know, we can, we can help understand um, what you're looking for and then we can try and build towards that. And, and the more people that we have telling us, hey, this is important, that, that really helps us a lot, right? Then we're able to understand how to, how to prioritize. Yeah, 100%. We have, we have a pretty big engineering organization in general, so we're able to accomplish a lot. Um, you know, there's also a, a point where if you have too many people in one part of the code, there's a lot of chances for collisions and, and more issues. So, you know, there's, there's, there is sort of a, a, a natural limit of how many people we can have in a particular area. But my guess is we're not reaching that limit in a lot of places. Um, but it, it is sort of something to pay attention to is how many people do you want on one thing where there's a chance where if you're working on different features that touch the same thing, then there could be a cause for, you know, kind of more downstream issues. 
There's potential to use the community to list out, say, 10 or 15 features that we're thinking about working on and just letting people vote on their highest priority. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and just say, you know, hey, here's what, here's what we're thinking about. Which ones do you all uh, want to see us work on first? And then just let them vote. And then we're not promising that we'll do that, but it, it helps to get that input, right? It's, so totally. It, and, and we did that last year with, with our survey and, and we got a list of, you know, probably 10, 15 different things that, um, we thought would be interesting to us. And we had people, you know, kind of tell us it was, if it was interesting to them mm -hmm. and that gave us a good indication of, of some of the things that were really important. But I think, excuse me, the, the thing that that may miss is some of the depth that folks are looking for, right? So um, we may need to rerun that with mm -hmm. some of the depth things, not just, you know, kind of new categories or new areas of things that we're interested in. Well, one of the things, the difference between doing it via a survey, but on, between doing the survey, but or doing it on the community is on the community, if we do it kind of in a, a work out loud mode, is people can vote, but then they can also ask questions or give comments that then other people can also, so, so everybody builds on each other, right? Someone yeah. says something and then let's say Brandon says something and then Luke says, oh yeah, I like that. And can you also add this? And then Rob or Nathan or Joe, you know, they add things on too. And then Kelly comes in and says something else. So you've got people building on each other and it, it just, people see what others are asking for and saying, yeah, I like that, but I, I don't really care about this. And when we, when we do surveys that they, they don't get to do that no, collaboration. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Absolutely. And, I think we should absolutely do that. There's no, yeah. there's no downside um, for us to do that. Right. And, to, and gathering in many yeah. ways is important too. Like, like a bunch yep. of different uh, ways yeah. to do it. Yeah. And I mean, I think, you know, part of it also is um, I, I ask this question when I'm on the phone with, uh, with some of our customers and it's, you know, tell me the one thing that if we could build that would be really valuable to you not three not five like one right and then all of a sudden it really focuses into like here's the real thing that really would make a difference to me right and and that's also really helpful too because you know sometimes people are like hey you know i want these 10 things and it's like okay well how do we take those 10 things and say this, this is the one thing if we went and did that would actually meaningfully make a difference right and and that's what you know, that's what we're trying to do. Ultimately, we're trying to sort through all the different pieces of in input that we get. And we get thousands and thousands of pieces of input and feature requests and things like that. Um, it's, it's amazing how many we get. We have 200,000 organizations that use the platform worldwide. So there's a ton of stuff coming at us. Um, and when we all of a sudden get somebody to say, this is the one thing, and here's the difference it would make, then it's sort of like, it really makes a big difference. And then, you know, then you go talk to other people and then you get a whole bunch of people saying this same thing. And then you understand the impact. And then you say, okay, that is going to make a big impact. We should go work on that because we know that that would be meaningful to people. Yeah. And Nathan's saying that the community approach has worked well when discussing things like remote assist to password manager, because Gerana and some of the other PMs came, PMMs came into the community and just said, Hey, what are you looking for in this? And what are you using now? What's missing? Um, what would you like to see in the future? And lots of people came in and, and gave feedback on that. And it, it really did um, make a difference because people were, were able to reply to each other and build on what they were, what they were looking for. So let's jump to the next question from Brandon. Do you think jump cloud will lead to a growth in use of Linux in the enterprise? Or do we see Mac Windows as the primary end user OSs still? I hope so. Uh, I mean, I, I love Linux, um, but I don't know. I mean, it's it's hard. I mean, the, the OSs have been around for a long time. Um, you know, you go back, whatever, 30, 40 years, you know, Windows has been so dominant. And, um, and then Mac was just a small sliver. And you know now Mac is really pretty big, but just think about how many years it took from Mac to go from a sliver to even where it is today, which by the way, is not even a majority of the market, right? And what's that? That's been probably 10, 15 years at least that it's really changed. And Linux has been around for, I don't know, uh, 25 years plus, um, long time. Um, so, 
I, you know, yeah, I would love, and, and look, I think in different countries, different parts of the world, by the way, we see a lot of Linux. Um, so, you know, you go to areas that are, have a different economic stature than, than the U S or, um, then maybe Europe, you go to places like Africa, you go to India, you go to Asia, all of a sudden Linux is all over the place and they are using it extensively. And, and they're asking us to support all kinds of different features uh, on Linux. And that's super cool. Um, so I hope so, but you know, I, I'm not a, I'm not an OS expert, but I can tell you that changes in the OS world seem to take many, many years uh, in terms of market share and, and you know, kind of how they get uh, deployed. All right. And let's see, Nathan had a follow on to one of Luke's earlier comments. It feels like John, uh, Jump Cloud takes the concept of minimum viable product a little too far, especially when you charge for some features as add-ons and then there were a couple others that kind of followed up along that like um i agree somehow the console keeps digging me on using patch management when i'm not i think because there's a policy in place i mean half of his mdm policies i love that remote assist is included but you'd figure patch management would be the value and remote assist the add-on so they're just saying you know like you might why haven't we kind of flipped um some of those things yeah 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 um all fair feedback, uh, I mean, <laughs> uh, uh, I don't have a good answer for you uh, other than, you know, I, I, I totally get it. And, you know, we have lots of people um, who think the opposite and it's just sort of, you, you know, you get to that where it's like, oh, you're, you're, you're not gonna get it right. And, you know, it's, um, you're just gonna have to make some decisions on this. I, I mean, I think one of the things that I think one of the things that we think a lot about are how do we give people choice um, on what they want? And then how do we maybe do some bundles that make it a little bit easier so you don't feel like you have to sit there and get all these different add-ons, right? And this has been an ongoing battle for us as a company to figure out like, where is that line? Where do you draw it? What, what feels fair? Um, what feels like, hey, you, you know, I really don't need patch management in this bundle, but yet you're including it and I'm paying for that bundle, right? So you get into both of those issues. And so the question becomes, how do we, how do we kind of get to where people can have some choice? And, and it's hard, right? It's, um, you know, I think the notion that, you know, we would have a bundle that had, you know, patching, and remote assist, password management, all that. So you don't feel like you're paying for all these add-ons. I think that's probably a pretty fair notion. And then there's a bundle that doesn't include those things where you know basically you can get it and you can say, look, I don't want those things. I, I think we wanna get to different, different areas of that, but then you don't wanna have so much complexity in, in all of this as well. So um, all that to say it's, um, we don't always get it right. And you know, I think some of these comments are are indicative of, you know, you don't always get it right. You try and do the best you can. You try and make it as um, maybe as reasonable as possible, but you, you know, you, you don't always get it right. I mean, Nathan thinks he has the solution is just include all the features and all the customers will be happy. Maybe not accounting. <laughs> well, I, so Nathan, I think the question there is, I would love to do that. Um, you know, are people okay with, you know, a higher price associated with that, right? Because it does take us a lot of money to go develop those things. But I think what you're saying is maybe, maybe the way I should ask the question is, are you okay if I gave you an all you can eat plan, if you will, and, and the price was commensurate with that so that we didn't bother you with any of the new, new things. Like you just basically know you've got all of jump cloud and all the stuff we come out with during the year. You don't worry about it. You just are like, Hey, I got it. It's included done i don't need to think about it um it, it would that be helpful would that be a useful construct for us to put in so that you know if you were excited enough you just never had to deal with add-ons i don't know i would love to hear whether people thought would that would be even useful or not yeah or would it just be too hard to push through your finance team you know yeah if pricing made sense then potentially yes so yeah, yeah. the question is you know what does make sense to yeah i mean that's so that's but at least at least what i'm hearing is that that might be an interesting model that's open people are open to that model 
um, because it, it does sort of simplify things. Right. And, um, you know, um, yeah, it, it makes yeah, sense. Yeah, and, and obviously it's, it's also, um, you know, as a business, we're, we're a business, we need to continue to, you know, make sure we're economically viable and, and all that stuff. And we're in it, we're investing in a lot of new products and, and capabilities. And at some point you need to get a return on, on that investment. Mm -hmm. um, so you're just trying to balance that out. Right. And, and I think the good news is I feel like we've added a lot of value over the years and we want to continue to add more value. And, I think sort of the vision of having this sort of central platform that really can be the core platform that people use to manage a lot of their infrastructure is something that, you know, that's our aspiration. So the more stuff that we can build and put in there, um, hopefully it means that you don't have to go spend money on a lot of other things. Hopefully it means you've got less integration time. Hopefully it means that, you know, you've got sort of a lot more automation because it's one, one single platform. If that's all there, then, you know, hopefully we can make that value equation work for everybody. Yeah. And uh, James is saying new features would appear as they became available. Yeah, and totally. every few years they yep. review and negotiate contracts. And Nathan's even saying they would so possibly sign multi-year uh, contracts if they could get really aggressive pricing on that. So, hey, yeah. Them and I think that's years. totally fair. That's a, that's a fair trade, right? Mm -hmm. um, if we have certainty that a customer um wants to to be around for three or five years and you know we know that that income is coming then we know the investments that we can make right i mean these are all i mean the good news is all this is totally rational right it's um you can you can come up with an agreement that makes sense where hey we're just going to um, give you all the the product that's coming in and you know it's for one price and your price is locked in for the next three years or five years you don't have to pay um, you know, whatever the, the pricing is, it is right. Everybody knows. And, and, you know, if jump cloud knows that that's going to happen, then, you know, we have certainty that we can make those investments. And then, you know, you as a customer know that, you know, what your pricing is every year and you know, you're going to get whatever's going to come out. And then I think the question becomes, how do you influence what are the core things that you want coming out, um, from us? Right. And then that's that whole discussion that we were having before, which is, you know, how do we make sure we know what, what you want and advocate for that and, you know, make sure that we find out that that's the most important stuff. One quick question, someone we haven't talked about yet. Um, Joe is asking if we're going to implement the Mac OS security that uh, Jamf has implemented. I don't know. I'm not familiar with all the the jam. It's, um, it's the NIST. The, it's the NIST government. Um, the the NIST ones are the CIS benchmarks and and things like that. I think those are things that we're looking at pretty actively, especially on the CIS side. So, um, I think the short answer is yeah, we want to continue going down that path of implementing more security controls so that um, and ideally, ultimately, it's you know, it's sort of a button is where you would like to get to. Um, whether that's NIST or CIS or, or whatever the benchmark is and you push that button and all of a sudden, you know, the Mac is, you know, configured that way. And, and if there's a deviation, you know, somehow you can figure that out and deal with it. Yeah. David's saying kind of like hardening on windows, but for Mac. So yeah. 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 Fair feedback. And, and I think, you know, I'll, I'll make sure that that feedback gets to the, the Mac team, but I'm, I'm, I'm sure that they've, I'm, I'm pretty sure Tom's probably yeah, yeah. already aware they're, of it yeah, and, totally and looking at it. Yeah. 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 Uh, okay. And let's see, Brandon, with the amount of net new features moving to add-ons, are we worried about conversations for people looking into the platform getting confused? Yes. Um, yeah, absolutely. Right. And, and this is going back to the whole pricing and packaging and the platform depth. You know, I, I think these are all interrelated questions. Um, it, it's, we're putting out a lot of functionality and in a lot of different areas and, um, and then how deep do you go? Um, how wide do you go? All, all, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> all of those are totally, um, I think, around the same question. And ultimately, the, the, the confusion part comes in if we don't do a good job communicating. So if we can't say to people, here's what we do, here's all the, the reasons that we do it, and you know, here's how to think about it, if that doesn't connect with people, then yeah, of course, they're going to get confused, right? So why do we have a password manager included with our platform? Well, we want to make sure we're controlling access to just about everything 
that that people need to access, right? So we're going to do that through passwords. We're going to do that through single sign-on. We're going to make sure you have multi-factor. We're going to make sure that there's passwordless, right? So we're going to make sure all of those ways of accessing something uh, can be done through through jump cotton. Maybe it's an SSH key. Maybe it's a password. Maybe it's a passwordless token or whatever it might be. It's you know whatever different way, right? So, so you have to have that logic that, that makes sense that you can communicate with people, but why do you have this thing? And, and that goes for just about any other capability that we have in the product. We have to be able to communicate that in a logical way. And then we have to connect it to the broader, you know, here's what this platform is trying to do for people. Awesome. Um, I have a feeling I know what the answer is to this one, but uh, James is asking, uh, when is the admin app coming out? Um, I, you know, I'm hesitant to say when, but I think it's supposed to be soon, be, but we've been saying that for a while. That has been a project that we've struggled with. Um, but um, yeah, I think let us get back to you on that. Um, I'm hoping that we have some news here, hopefully shortly, but, you know, just like any, anywhere else, we have our challenges, right? There's certain projects that, that turn out to be um, much more complicated, harder for whatever reason. And, and a lot of times, you know, what happens is from the outside looking in, it's, it's like, and even me being the outsider, let's say, I, I won't even say um, outside of, of jump cloud. I'm like, Hey, you know, this is pretty straightforward. Why can't, can't we do this really quickly? And then what ends up happening is that you realize there's all kinds of dependencies and integration points that were much harder um, that end up taking longer. So, you know, this has been one of those projects. It's not been one of the easy ones for us, unfortunately. You would think it would be a lot more straightforward and easy, but it wasn't in, in this case. But I think we're we're hopefully getting to a, a point where you know we're getting closer and and we'll have some news here soon. Awesome. Uh, one more pricing question from Rob. Um, have we ever thought about pricing a pricing tier that focuses more on device instead of per user? And he's saying that. Uh, they've got some machines that a bunch of users log in on, but they're only four machines. So remote assist say would cost them for 11 users, but it's only on four machines. So, you know, like, maybe, yeah, maybe I would need to, option. yeah, I would need to understand that um, a little bit more. So the, the way that we price in packages, it's based on a user, but you have three devices per user and we don't care what, devices and user combination is it's just a ratio so let's say you have a hundred users you would have 300 devices that you could have and whether those hundred users were connected to those devices wouldn't really matter but it's just sort of a ratio so i guess the first question would be um are you outside of that ratio meaning you know you have if you have 11 people um you'd have 33 machines are you above the 33 machines and if you're not then you're totally fine and if you are above them, then, you know, we should just understand that we have on occasion gotten people to say, Hey, I just want the device. I just want your devices capabilities. And I want you to just charge me on a per device basis. That's something that we're interested in doing. Um, we're just not there. And then this goes back to all the back end billing system and all of the challenges around, like when you build a model that's per user, and then all of a sudden you got to add per device to everything, we've got to go back to the beginning and basically re-architect a ton of stuff. So, so it's something that we are interested in. It's probably not one of the shorter term things. Um, you know, the way we've tried to deal with it is generally this ratio. And then, you know, if we need to, we just have a conversation with a customer and say, hey, you know, you need this many devices. Great. Let's come up with the agreement is and, and we'll figure it out. Yeah, because I've talked to some people that are, are looking at like they've got um, APs and servers and um, a bunch of uh, security systems like, like cameras and things that they, they want to control who yep. can access them. So they've got way more devices than they have people. So they're trying to figure out how how would we we do this? Um, they'd have to get more licenses really than they have people just to get that one to three ratio so they're, yeah. they're trying so to figure we'll, out the what same we thing. usually yeah what we usually do is we just end up you know if it's like a bunch of cameras or things that you know aren't really yeah they're, they're not like a person's device then we'll just come up with a, a different agreement and you know we'll just make it you know like we, we have agreements with people who have you know like thousands and thousands of devices and we we end up saying okay here's what the ratio is but they they need it for a use case where they only have like say 25 users but they have like 5,000 machines well that ratio is way off so then we just come up with a price and we work through it okay cool 
All right. So we are, um, we've got five minutes left and I know we have more uh, questions than we have time for. Uh, Alexa will continue to collect these questions and we'll, we'll see if we can go ahead and get Raj's answers written out and then maybe post them as a follow-up on the community so we can get uh, the rest of those out to everyone. Uh, this has been great. And I wanted to leave you just a couple of minutes to um, see if you had any closing or parting thoughts since I know you have to jump right, right away to another meeting. So I yeah, didn't want to no, keep great. you over. Yeah, it's great to talk to everybody. Thank you. Um, I, I just say, look, I, I appreciate the questions, the passion. Um, I, I also appreciate all the, the feedback. Like, you know, we don't always get things right. And I'll be the first one to say that. Um, but we really do want to learn. We want to improve. We want to get better. Um, one of our core values is 1% better every day. And, and I think the whole team really believes in that pretty significantly. I think the cool part is you've got this company in Jump Cloud and people um, who really deeply care about what we're doing and the impact that we can make. And what gets us excited is that, you know, we work with so many amazing companies and we see this every day who are changing the world in some way. We work with amazing companies that are trying to cure cancer. We work with amazing companies that are working on all kinds of social justice things. We have amazing um, companies in all parts of the world that are trying to make a huge impact on, on, on the world in all kinds of really cool ways. And so that's what gets us pretty excited is trying to help those people go accomplish their mission. And we're pretty passionate about what we do in terms of being able to make people productive, hopefully help keep them very secure, um, make sure that they can use the technology that's best for them and, and open and, and, and free. So, so that's, what, that's what we're passionate about. And I, I wanna say thank you. We couldn't be here without everybody else, you know, supporting us on this journey. And, and you know, we don't always get stuff right, but we do care deeply and we do wanna get it right. So we appreciate the feedback. Yeah, and thank you everyone for the awesome questions. I mean, there were some really good questions and um not i don't think there were any softballs either so not that was really great yeah. uh kelly says that when will raj come back for another lightning round so maybe we can get whenever, you for like whenever, a, whenever you'll have me how's that yeah <laughs> like, like maybe a 15 or 30 minute one or something like that or we'll do another hour maybe sometime later in the year when yeah, we can definitely. get on your calendar we'll yeah yeah sure. awesome and we, we also got a lot of good feedback i don't know if you saw it when it was scrolling by but we got some people talking about how much they love us and i have some new new awesome. favorites that all uh, yeah, yeah. We, we do it's care great. and i'm i love to get on the phone with with folks so you know um you know we'll do it again yeah we'll, we'll do it as often as we can um but uh yeah appreciate everybody being here yeah, for those of you that don't know and haven't talked to Raj before, he's very accessible and he reads all of the responses when, when people respond to his emails. He reads them. He may not always respond back, but he reads every single one of them. And um, he's always listening to feedback. So please be reassured that if you have feedback to give, he does he does hear it. And no, no joke, no BS about that. Even though my initials are BS, I am not BSing, I promise, it, it's true. Um, Got to throw in the last joke there. Thank you all for coming. Thanks for spending your Friday with us. We will see you again next week. And thanks for, um, oh, no, new JC merch. We'll, we'll work on that. We, uh, we, we are trying to get the t-shirts the and everything back and ready to go. We're, we're switching vendors and switching platforms. So we're going to work on getting those t-shirts and getting prizes and fun things back out during the IT hour stuff. So stay tuned and we'll, we'll see what we can do. So thanks everyone. Thanks, and we everybody. will see you next time.